Good morning. Good morning and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Elder Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always an honor to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. We are excited about what He is doing in this time and in this atmosphere and the series that we've been teaching. Let me say this is growing. It's expanding. I am enjoying it. I I pray that you are enjoying it as well. We've covered several topics. And this morning, uh, I, I, I wrote down a few things because what's happening is the series is, is beginning to take on a, a shape and a form. When we first introduced this series over a week ago, The Oracles of the Holy Spirit is the series, but we've covered aspects of Introduction to the Holy Spirit 101, the application of the Holy Spirit, meaning the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. This morning, and I love the way the Holy Spirit does things, I I heard this word in my spirit, credence, credence of the Holy Spirit. And so what we're going to take a look at today is the meaning of the word credence, the importance of it, how to be careful when it comes to the Holy Spirit. This is all connected to the promises of God. One of the promises given unto us is over in John. And so let me go over there because... This is one of the promises that Jesus gave unto us. John 14 and 15 says, If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall shall give you the comforter that he may abide with you forever. Then when you get over to the 17th verse, it says, Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for ye dwelleth, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That is so powerful. It is, it is of a truth. But when we're looking at the word credence, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. The definition of the word credence is to believe to be credible, confidence, as to add credence to a remark, reliance of the mind on evidence of facts derived from other sources other than personal knowledge. It also means that which gives a claim to credit, belief, or confidence as a letter of confidence. When you're looking at it uh, in the spiritual, it is moral conviction of religious truth or the truthfulness of God or a religious teacher, especially reliance upon God. And so what we're going to look at when it talks about the word credence, we're going to look at, uh, we have some synonyms and and this this is a teaching series, so we're definitely teaching Synonyms for credence are credit, to trust, to accept, to have faith, confidence, admission, assurance, certainty, dependence, reliance, stock, store, accepting, and admitting. Truly we know that whatsoever the Holy Spirit hears, he speaks. And so we should be very, very careful when we hear the word spoken to us, a revelation, a vision. And it is coming from the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit 
is showing us, is revealing unto us things from God the Father. And when we do not adhere, when we do not listen, when we do not give that credence, meaning acceptance, when we do not rely upon the word, that is how we grieve and hinder the Holy Spirit. Because we do not believe the very words that are spoken to our spirit. The warning, warning comes before destruction. If we don't believe that warning, if we don't take heed to that warning, we are grieving the Holy Spirit. We're hindering the Holy Spirit. We're gonna share with you some scriptures. Credence is also persuasion. The Holy Spirit reveals unto us the mysteries of God's word. He is the spirit of truth. He tells us what God wants to say to us. And also in turn, what we want to say to God, he carries that message back. But throughout the scriptures, there's this question, whose, whose report will you believe? Will you believe that God gave his only begotten son? Will you believe that Jesus is the word and that he came in the likeness of flesh for you and I? Will you believe that the Holy Spirit is the messenger, the earpiece, the eyes, the revelatory source for us? Will you believe that he is a part of the Trinity? When we're looking at faith, And we're, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Within this series, we did introduce the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit found over in 1 Corinthians 12. I am flipping my pages to get over there. First Corinthians 12 talks about the manifestations of the spirit. For one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit to another faith. One of the words for synonyms for credence is faith, to believe. And so I looked a little further and when we're talking about faith, that gift of faith, coming from the Holy Spirit, the, the gift of faith. Faith is always a gift from God and never something that can be produced by people. And so this belief, as we read the Holy Scriptures, it takes our belief, it takes our credence, our acceptance, believing the report, having confidence in the things revealed unto us by the Holy Spirit that will increase and grow our faith. It's nothing that we can do in our own flesh and blood. It must be done through the Holy Spirit. Faith, the gift of faith for the believer is God's divine persuasion and therefore distinct from human belief confidence. I am confident that Jesus Christ prayed to the Father that he would send the comforter, that the comforter, who is also the spirit of truth, will lead and guide me into all truth, that he will reveal unto me the mysteries of God's word. 
I can't just read the word of God and understand it and comprehend it and attain it and teach it on my own accord. It takes the ability of the Holy Spirit working in and through me to do this. Without him, without God, I can't do anything. Without the power, the wisdom, and the revelation of the Holy Spirit, I can't attain, I can't comprehend. Uh, my, my, my follicles in my brain will just not, it won't compute. And so I rely totally on the Holy Spirit to guide me into all truth. Because what might seem right unto me, what may seem mm, good and sound to me is not necessarily what's right and sound in the eyes of God. And so I must rely on the guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me into all truth. The reason why we rely and we believe and we have confidence in the Holy Spirit is so that we don't offend one another, so that we don't hinder the work of God in others or in ourselves, so that the will of God may be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's why we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's why we must rely on that guidance. We must rely on his revealing his word, the word of God to us, to shed light on the meaning of our dreams and of our visions. When this word credence fell into my spirit this morning, let me tell you, I looked it up. When the Holy Spirit dropped something and to you, a word that you don't use in your everyday vocabulary. And so intrigue, and I looked it up and I began to see scriptures and the synonyms to this word. Once again, credence is belief. Whose report are you going to believe? Why read the word of God if you're not going to believe it? Why call on the name of our Lord and Savior if you don't believe that he is the word and he came down in the likeness of flesh? Why confess something you don't believe in? Hmm. Oh my God, that's that credence. Romans 10 said, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Well, if your mouth is just saying it and you don't believe in it in your heart, why? Why are we confessing things that we don't believe in? Believe in for the good reports as well as the warnings and the bad reports, the reports of that you've been disobedient, the reports that uh, you've stepped out of the will of God, uh, the correction, the chastisement, the reproof, the rebuke, the, 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 the directions and the instructions, accept it all because it is for the glory of God. And so I must accept all of the Holy Spirit, not partial. I accept his voice. I accept his directions because they're coming from the Father. No, I can't just uh, accept it. I can't accept it in my flesh. It's not something, it's a spiritual connection that wherever good is present, so is evil. And so the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, which will guide you, will say, mm, don't make that turn 
don't say that, don't do that, don't act like that. You know, this flesh of ours likes to speak and, and, and to make our own declaration. But that's not the way of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is wisdom. The Holy Spirit will give you the gift of wisdom of what to say and when to say and when not to say and how. It'll teach you to hold your peace. It will teach you to wait on the Lord, being rest assured that what he said, it shall come to pass. And and, and let me go over here because I, I, I feel the shift and I'm going to go with the shift. You're talking about credence. And so we're going to go over to Isaiah 55. And this is something that you can believe in, you can hope in, you can trust in, because it is true. Let's see where we want to start. Because 55 is, is so good, and, and, and I never like to just start in the middle. So let's start at 55 and 1. And we're talking about credence. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about belief, confidence. This is something you can have confidence in. And so with this series, the Oracles of the Holy Spirit, it is to educate. It is to build your faith. It is to build your confidence in the Holy Spirit. He won't lead you wrong. So I pray that what we're sharing here on the balance of life with it, within the series, and this is day nine, teaching on the oracles of the Holy Spirit. And, and I tell you, he's expanding it. He's bringing new revelation. I'm excited. I'm absolutely, I'm loving it. So let's go to Isaiah 55 and 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. This is an invitation. The Israelites who had forsaken God and his righteousness are invited by God to return to him and be restored to fellowship and blessing. That's something that we can rely on. He chastens whom he loves. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Although we might forsake him, although we might go astray, he's saying, return unto me and I will receive you. He gives that promise over in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, have credence in that, believe in that, have confidence in that. Believe that word. And not only just believe it, but confess it and apply it to your life. We're talking about credence in the Holy Spirit, the belief, the hope, the faith, the confidence. Because what he is revealing unto you, what he is saying unto you is coming from the Father. And you can bank on it. You can rest in it. When he says, trust in me. When he says, call upon me and I will answer. Have credence in that. Believe it. Have confidence in it. Know without a sure. Don't doubt it. You can rest in it. That if I call upon the Lord, he will answer me. When I am in distress and I call upon him, he will answer me. When I humble myself, when I pray, when I seek his face and I turn from my wicked ways, I have confidence that he will hear me that he will begin to heal my land, 
that my prayers are answered in acceptance. I have confidence in that. Isaiah 55 and 2, and let us continue. It says, Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Why put your, your hopes and confidence in things that don't profit you anything? That's what he's saying. I brought you out of Egypt. I've taken you from being a tail to the head. I've given you a land that was not yours. I've driven out your enemies from before you. Have confidence in what I'm saying to you and what I can do for you. Don't put your confidence in things that can't profit you anything. Don't put your confidence in things and images made by the hands of man. But I am spirit and I am life and I am truth. And I created the heavens and the earth. And I divided the waters and the seas and, and I created the fowls of the air and, and the things that float in the sea. And, and I created those things and, and I formed man from the dust and we breathe into his nostrils. And, and so I spoke it and it was so and so have confidence and credence in the things of God. Hearken dil diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. That fatness is um, the manifestations of the promises of God. He shall bring it to pass. That's that fatness. That fatness is uh, seeking knowledge. That fatness is seeking healing for your spiritual and natural body. That your soul is is delivered, that your mind is, is delivered and from uh, thinking all manner of things and for mental uh, disease and, and from the attacks of the enemy in the body of sickness. That's that fatness. I can receive it. I believe it because you said it. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. I'll say that again because we're talking about belief, confidence. Incline your ear and come unto me and your soul shall live. If I follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, if I lean not into my own understanding and in all my ways I acknowledge him, he shall direct my path. My soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. That everlasting covenant is that I will have everlasting life that I may reign with him in heaven, that I may have a, a home, that I may go back with him. But I must incline my ear and come unto him and hear. So that's, that, that's a lot going on in there. I must incline my ear. I must be obedient and come. and hear. The coming is the doing. The coming is to be obedient. My God, this is this is good. And I, I thank God for, for revealing this, pouring out today. And I, I have to read that again because it's, it's just so good. Incline your ear and come unto me. Humble yourself, pray and seek his face. My God, incline your ear and come unto me and hear. Humble yourselves. Pray. Seek his face. 
turn from your wicked ways and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of God. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commandment to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee, your confidence. He said it and it shall be. The call that he has upon your life, it shall be. But incline your ear unto him and come and hear. Listen to the instructions concerning the call that he has upon your life. Listen to the instruction that he has given you for that ministry, for that business, concerning your families, concerning connections, relationships. Concerning you. Incline your ear and come here and your soul shall live. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. That's building your confidence. This is something you can believe in. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. When I call upon him, I know that he's going to answer. I don't doubt it. I know 100% that when I called upon the Lord, he's going to answer me. When I ask for directions and instructions, I'm going to receive it. I just have to be wait and patient and not move ahead of him. But I know that the answer is on the way. When I want peace, I ask for it and it is mine. I do not doubt it. When I want joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. That means that when I get weary, I rely on the joy of the Lord. My confidence is in him. I know that he will revive me spiritually, that he will restore unto me, that he will replenish me. My confidence is this, that I know he loves me, that he knows my heart, that he knows my intentions. He knows my agenda. I know he knows me better than I know myself. I have confidence in that. I believe it. I can rest in it. When trouble in the hands of the enemy is attacking, I believe and I know that he says I'll lift up a standard. I know it. It's mine. The promises of God belong to me. I am confident in them. I believe them. They hold credits. Credence, credits, however you want to pronounce it. I believe it. I have faith in it. I rely on it. Let the wicked <clears throat> forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he shall have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Believe this. Have confidence in it where it says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. What happens when I return unto the Lord and I forsake being unrighteous in my thoughts and forsake being wicked, he will have mercy upon me. He'll have mercy upon you. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He will forgive our sins. He will forgive you. Yes, God will forgive you. Ask him for forgiveness. Return unto him. And he will forgive you. It says it right here in the word. You have to believe that thing for yourself. You have to have confidence in who God says that you are. He said it about you. 
He says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. I don't care what is going on around you. I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Yes, I I will chastise you because I know the thoughts I have towards you to give you a good and expected end. I created you. Uh, I ordained you uh, before you were in your mother's womb. I know all about you. And so I will chastise you because I, I know what I created you to be. And if you return unto me, you will be what I created you to be. You can fulfill what I created in you before you hit your mother's womb. Believe that. Have confidence in that. Rest in that. I am who he says that I am. I'm not even the negative thoughts that the enemy wants me to think about myself. I am created in the image of the most high. I am beloved by him. Have confidence in that. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Let me rest, let, let, let me reassure you that even the thoughts that you have are not God's thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, say of the Lord. I think more of you than you think of yourself. I know more about you than you know about yourself. I created you, he says. I formed you. I know all about you. I love you when you could not love yourself. Why? Because my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. When you doubted yourself, I believed in you. When you said you couldn't make it, I knew you could because my thoughts are not your thoughts. When you told yourself that my life is not living, he says you are worth living because I love you. When you could not appreciate you, He did. Why? Because his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. He doesn't see us as we are, see, as we see ourselves. Now we should pray that we can see ourselves as he does. But this old flesh we doubt ourselves, we second guess ourselves, we lose confidence in ourselves. There are times we see ourselves as failures without realizing that those experiences are what allows us to be who we are. Those things that we face is that when they come around again, we'll know what not to do. You're not a failure. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways your ways. I will forgive you. The enemy will make you think, oh, this time I messed up really bad and, and I just can't go back. That is a lie from the pits of hell. He says, if you return from me, if you return to me, if you forsake your wicked ways and the unrighteousness of your thoughts, I will have mercy upon you, but the enemy will tell you, mm, I've gone, I've gone too far this time. That last mistake, I don't, I don't know. I can't come back off of that one. That is a lie from the pits of hell. He says it right here. He says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man, his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. And then he goes on to give you even further confidence so that you can believe for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. I don't care how high we go up in the plane, 
we'll never reach the heights of the clouds and the heavens. When you're standing on the ground and you look up, it might appear that it could be right here. But as you travel up, you're going to see you're further and further and further and further away. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. I, I, I have to go back to verse 7, 55 and 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. Why? It tells you in verse 8 and 9. And we're talking about the credence of the Holy Spirit. The confidence. The belief. Believe this word. Believe that he will forgive you. Believe that he will not leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you even until the end of time. And so he sent the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, to reveal this unto you. And so there you have the comforter, my God. When you've made that mistake, yes, you're going to get corrected. But there's also that comfort that says, return unto the Lord and he will forgive you. Ask for forgiveness and he will forgive you. Repent, turn from your wicked ways and he'll have mercy upon you. He told the children of Israel time after time, I'm married to you. I'm married to the backslider. I won't leave you or forsake you. Even when they were disobedient, and he allowed the enemy to come and take him into captivity. When the enemy was too harsh and really, really went overboard in mistreating God's people, they had to, they had to pay for that. God cares about you. He loves you. If he did not love you, he would not have sent his son the word wouldn't have come in the likeness of flesh. He would not have gone through that crucifixion. The endangerment, to say the least, the torture. But he loved us so much. He loved you so much that he says it's worth it. It was worth it. And that's why he says, by his stripes, you are healed. His dying on the cross meant something. You have to believe what it meant. It meant that he gave his life so that I can have life. My God. Verse 10, and we are in Isaiah 55. It says, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. You can believe that you can count on that you can rest in that let's read that again for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither it comes down it comes down from heaven it doesn't come up from the earth it comes down from heaven when he says it it will come down but watereth the earth. The snow waters the earth. The rain waters the earth. And maketh it to bring forth. And bud. It replenishes. This is that confidence. This is that belief. This is that credence. 
believe me at my word. The rains will come down. The snow will come down from heaven and returneth not neither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Have confidence in that. This is what happens. This is what transpires. Because I spoke it. Because I said it. And it is so. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. You can rest and have credence and assurance in the very word of God. When he speaks to you through the Holy Spirit, believe it. Have confidence in it. Don't waver. I don't care what the situation may look like. When God puts something in your spirit, when he made you a promise, hold fast to that promise. Rest in that promise. God, you said it and it was so. Now within that promise, he's going to give you some instructions, some directions. Along the way, we do have to be reproved and corrected and chastened and rebuked because we want to do things our way because we think sometimes oh, it's taking a little too long and I want to step in but he says in my appointed time and when we step out of line when we get anxious he reproves us he corrects us because it's supposed to be about his glory he's saying believe my word have confidence in this have faith in this it's going to happen. Pay attention. The rain comes down. The rain does not, it doesn't come from the earth into the heaven. It comes from the heavens down. The snow does not come from the ground. It comes from the heavens. It falls to the earth. It replenishes. It waters the earth. It causes things to grow. It washes and cleanses things away. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. This is your confidence. Have confidence in my word. Believe my word. Don't hinder my work by your disbelief. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit by second guessing the word that he gave you. Believe it. I know that it may seem hard. I know that it is rough at times. And you just, and it's like, okay, the flesh becomes impatient. But he's saying right here, trust me. Trust me. Have confidence in me. Have credence in me. I will be what you need me to be if you allow me to be. Have faith in me. My word shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I send it out to do. Just like the rain comes from the heaven to the earth, so shall my word. We have confidence that that's the way that the rain falls. Have confidence in the very word that he speaks. He says, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And so if he said it to you, it pleased him and it shall accomplish. It shall come to pass. Be patient. Have credence. Trust Wait, but in your waiting, he's going to give you some instructions. He's going to give you some directions. It shall come to pass. The rain came down. The snow came down for a purpose. His word is for a purpose in your life. Believe it. Trust in it. Have confidence. It says, 
it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. I believe that. I have confidence in that. And so whenever you're going through that period of doubt and the enemy is, is making you second guess and the enemy is saying, are you sure, you know, because you've waited for so long and it seems like every time you get started that a hindrance or a roadblock comes, but God is saying it shall accomplish that which I send it to because it pleased me to say it. It pleased me to give you that promise. It pleased it pleased me to put that call upon your life, that 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 operation, that gift of faith, that gift of the word of wisdom, that gift of of the word of understanding, the gift of healing, the gift of prophecy. Uh, I, I called you to be my apostles, my pastors, my evangelists, my prophets, my teachers. I called you because it pleased me. It pleased him. And so he put a word in your belly. He put a vision within you. He gave you a desire to do a thing. And we're trying to figure out how we're going to make it happen. He's saying, but trust me, because I'm the one who spoke it. So I can bring it to pass. So let him. I'm the one who caused it to be. I'm the one who put you on the hearts of men. I'm the one who called you forth. I'm the one who gave you that dream, that desire, that vision. I'm the one who put that word in your belly. And at the appointed time, I will release you to speak it, to say it, to do it, to accomplish it in my time. If you think about the water hitting the ground and it's bringing forth bud, there, there's, a, there's a fertilization process that has to happen. There's a budding process and a growing process before the seed can pre be produced into bread. There is a process and it doesn't happen overnight. Yes, we see the slice of bread, but you must go back and think about the process it took to make that bread all the way back to the ground being selected. And tenured. And pruned and, and prepared before the seed could be dropped. And then the rain fell. And over the course of time, there was a process taking place. Before the wheat grew, before the farmer could pluck it. And then it goes through another process before it became bread. For ye shall go out with joy this is confidence. This is credence. And be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. And instead of the burr shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Amen. I tell you this word. The series, the oracles of the Holy Spirit. I love the direction that he's taking us in here at the balance of life. We are attentive and open to receive from the Holy Spirit what God is saying. And so we have confidence that what he allows us to share, that it is food unto your spirit, that you will begin to take the applications of the Holy Spirit, of the word of wisdom, 
Take him at his knowledge. Take him at the fear of the Lord. Take him as counselor, as comforter, and apply him to your life. He was sent unto you because Jesus prayed to the Father. And he said over in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father. He shall send you the comforter. And so he sent unto you. Oh my God, he is sent unto you as the rain fall from heaven upon the earth to bring forth and to bud so that the seed may have bread. He was sent. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, he is the rain and he is the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, being you and I, and make it if to bring forth and bud, that you may grow into all spiritual maturity, that ye may give to the soul, give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, that you may be effective witnesses unto Christ. I absolutely love you here on the balance of life. We invite you to visit us on the website, www.angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com. On the website, I'm, I'm just in awe at this word. On the website, you have the opportunity to check out the School of Ministry and Mentoring, the courses that we offer, the length of time and how you can engage and, and register for the courses. You can also order our workbooks on Amazon. Also, while you're on the website, check out Hope and Truth magazine. We have a great selection of books. Uh, we have uh, items online that, uh, upon your order. We can ship them to you. And, and so I'm so excited about what God is doing in this time. On the website, you can also check out Hope and Truth magazine. Visit the magazine via issue.com. Uh, our ministry schedule I'm, I'm so excited. We are actually planning uh, this week. Uh, we will uh, begin travel. We are going to continue to teach the, the promises of God, the components of the Old and New Covenant. We are also into part two of that workbook, The Keys of Promise. And I, I'm praying, I'm hoping that we will... Uh, we are allowed to teach the oracles of the Holy Spirit while we're out traveling. We are traveling between May 2nd and we will return June 5th. Uh, we will continue our broadcasting schedule Mondays and Fridays, 1130 a.m. here on the Balance of Life's channel, as well as radio ministry Tuesday through Thursday, 1230 p.m., all of that information is on our website. Also, if you would like to become partners in prayer with us, there are two ways. There are uh, just sending in your prayer request. We believe the word of God, praying ye one for another that ye may be healed. If you desire prayer, if you have questions about the teaching and want further insight or, or the scripture text that we've shared within our series, email us that as well. Our email address is afergusonwrp at yahoo.com. Also, if you would like to sow a seed, a financial seed in this ministry that will assist us in expanding our broadcasting presence uh, and, and reaching other areas of teaching, uh, you can do so by emailing us at afergusonwrp at yahoo.com. Our cash app is AF Ministries. Uh, email us and we will uh, definitely get more details over to you. As I believe the word of God, I know that he has great plans for you. Remember, his thoughts are not your thoughts concerning even you. His ways are as high as the heavens are above the earth concerning you. So even when you doubt yourself, he doesn't doubt you. Even when you don't see potential in you, he does. 
even when the enemy tries to tell you that you're not worth living, that you're not worth the sacrifice, he says, yes, you are. And he proved that by giving his only son. He proved that by sending the comforter, the spirit of truth to you and I. Have confidence in him, believe him, trust him. Credence of the Holy Spirit. If God prolongs his coming, we will meet again on Friday, 11.30 a.m. We're just going to let God have his way during this series. I'm excited. And the series is, is, is available in audio as well as video. And so at the end of the series, we will put everything together where you can have a package of both audio and visual for your collection so that you can go back and take your time, share this word because it is so needed at this time in our lives. I absolutely love you. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. Have a blessed afternoon.